2021 brought us relevant information for the treatment of patients with a multiple myeloma and indeed approximately 900 abstracts presented at us were related with the disease. But I would like to remark that ASH 2021 has been, from the myeloma point of view, I would say, a year of consolidation of the results because no many new clinical trials, phase three clinical trials resulting in novel standard of curves have been so far presented, but update of many clinical trials that I think that it is relevant because we are having relevant information about these trials with a longer follow-up and will result in the near future in a new standard of curves for the management of patients with multiple myeloma. And if I can start briefly, for example, in the newly diagnosed myeloma patients, I think the highlight would be the incorporation of the monoclonal antibodies and ICD-38 as part of the induction regimes. And this means that the majority of the patients will be treated with quadruplet combinations in the future including proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, dexamethasone, and the anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies. And I would like to highlight also in terms of maintenance therapy, lenalidomide today continues being the standard of care, but there are some possibilities of improving the outcome of patients, improving the maintenance, and a possibility is to combine lenalidomide with, again, monoclonal antibodies, anti-CD38. In the transplant ineligible population, so in the elderly population, there have not been many new data. And just to remark the great efficacy previously reported for direct mumab in combination with the lenalidomide and dexamethasone with relevant information from the patient's point of view because of the quality of life of the patients treated with the direct mumab in combination with the lenalidomide and dexamethasone was significantly better in comparison with the lenalidomide and dexamethasone alone. And this is applicable to some specific domains like the physical functioning, the fatigue, pain, dyspnea. And I think that this is extremely important for the patients. In this setting, in the transplant ineligible population, we are moving more and more into a frailty adapted therapy, what is also very relevant for the patients. Elderly population is a heterogeneous group of patients, and in the future, we will evaluate the frailty of these patients by the use of different geriatric scales, and we will individualize much more the treatment according to this frailty score. And at the end of the day, the treatment will be much more individualized for this population. In the relapsed and non-refractory setting, I would like to highlight definitely the consolidation of the immunotherapy strategies for these patients. And the BCMA targeted therapy throughout the use of antibody drug conjugates like Belantamaf, by specific monoclonal antibodies or CAR-Ts are clearly consolidating in this setting. And from Belantamaf point of view, novel combinations will be coming. And this is uh, an example for the combination based on Belantamaf in combination with the pomalidomide and dexamethasone. Concerning by specific monoclonal antibodies, there is a long list of this type of monoclonal antibodies that they are resulting in a great efficacy for relapsed and non-refractory myeloma patients. And over 60 and 70% of the triple drug class refractory myeloma patients are responding to these novel agents. And this is important because the bispecific monoclonal antibodies are off-the-shelf drugs that are going to be available in majority of the centers. And together with these two immunotherapy strategies, we have a CAR-T's. And a CAR-T's at this ASA 2021, 
resulted into a consolidation of the great efficacy so far reported again in heavily pretreated myeloma patients. But the overall response rate reported, for example, with the Silta cell is excellent because majority of the patients after at least six or seven prior lines of therapy responded and indeed the majority of them achieved a the complete response and the progression for survival and the overall survival is excellent. From my point of view, these novel immunotherapeutic strategies are very important because they are going to rapidly move to earlier lines of therapy and even there are some clinical trials already planned in the first line of therapy. And to finalize, novel drugs with a different mechanism of action. And we have a new cell mods that will replace maybe lenalidomide and pomalidomide. And this is the case for iverdomide or another immunomodulatory drug that it has not a name yet. And its name right now is CC480. And exciting results evaluated in patients even treated with this novel immunotherapy strategies and also uh, other drugs with uh, specific with a different mechanism of action like a monoclonal antibody releasing interferon into the tumor cells but uh, also other monoclonal antibodies targeting new antigens expressed on the surface of the plasma cells and this is the case of uh, Talquetamaba with GPRC5D or Sebostamaba with FCRH5. So I would like to summarize for the patients that definitely the future landscape for myeloma is quite exciting because definitely the clinical development plan for all these novel drugs is becoming very rapid and all these uh, innovations are rapidly moving to earlier lines of therapy. And this uh, will translate in two important facts that uh, newly diagnosed myeloma patients uh, will receive uh, maybe the optimal therapies. These optimal therapies will result in the greatest benefit and uh, we are maybe in the optimal situation in order to potentially plan a potential cure, not for all, but maybe for some newly diagnosed myeloma patients. If we consider all the novel agents that are being incorporated into the treatment landscape for patients with multiple myeloma, I envision that the majority of the patients will be treated with the proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, and anti-CD30H monoclonal antibodies as part of the first line of therapy. And this is going to result definitely in a medium progression of survivals longer than in the past when the anti-CD3H monoclonal antibodies were not incorporated into the first line of therapy. This means that some patients, unfortunately, will early relapse after this optimal first line of therapy, few patients, and we will have some patients who will late relapse after this first line of therapy, maybe eight or nine years later, and majority of the patients will present intermediate relapses. I personally consider that the BCMA targeted therapy throughout antibody drug conjugated by specific monoclonal antibodies or CAR-Ts will be maybe the first choice in the future at the moment of the first relapse, because this means to definitely switch to another mechanism of action BCMA targeted therapy. And from my point of view, if the patient is eligible, maybe the CAR T would be the first choice. But uh, we have to realize that not all patients are going to be eligible for CAR T therapy because of the logistic, because of the requirement of specialized centers for delivering the CAR T. But we are going to have uh, the bi specific monoclonal antibodies and uh, the mechanism of action can potentially mimic the mechanism of action of CAR T's, and the same is applicable to belantamav mafodotin in combination with the different backbones. And this is what I consider for third line and beyond. 
in the near future, I think that we will have the opportunity to utilize drugs with a different mechanism of action. And this is the case, for example, for selinexor of the new cell modes like ivertomide, CC480, or even immunotherapic strategies targeting antigens different to BCMA like GPRC5D or FCRH5. And definitely, I think that there are plenty of possibilities. And what we can say to our patient right now that it is possible a patient with multiple myeloma to be cured with the first line of therapy. And this would be the ideal situation for majority of the patients. But this, if this would not be the case, today the patients have the possibility for receiving many different lines of therapy because there are many new drugs with a different mechanism of action. And again, and this is our goal, to try to utilize always the best, the first, because we are going to benefit to more patients and the benefit is going to be great. Uh, all of these uh, novel combinations uh, uh, can be potentially approved by the regulatory agencies like FDA, European Medicine Agency, and so on. But uh, it's true that we need, at the end of the day, these uh, novel combinations are have to be available for our patients across the different countries. And we know that each new drug approved by the European Medici Agency requires from some negotiations at the country level in order to get the reimbursement. This is something that we have to try to achieve because definitely when we incorporate all these novel strategies as part of the first lines of therapy, we are going to see a significant benefit for the patients because the responses are going to be very rapid. This means that the tumor burden is going to be reduced after just one or two cycles of therapy. And we know that this is going to impact into the quality of life of the patients. Why? Because all symptomatology related with the disease burden is going to basically disappear after the first cycles of therapy. And this is something that we see. And I would like to refer specifically to the excellent quality of life so far reported for patients included in the CAR T cells clinical trials. I have some experience with the patients included in clinical trials with BCMA CAR Ts. And the common denominator for all of them is the excellent quality of life. Responses are observed just in the first month after the CAR T cell administration, but patients do not require from further therapy. This means that the patients are going to be not only disease free, but also treatment free. And this means that it is not required for the patients to come to the hospital every week or even more than one time per week for receiving therapy. And in the medium and in the long-term follow-up, there are some patients that are coming to the hospital every three months. This means that the quality of life and the incorporation between brackets to the normal life is much more feasible for patients receiving these novel therapies. I think that we have to fade against the authorities because we have to achieve all these novel combinations and all these novel immunotherapic strategies for the patients with multiple myeloma, not only because of the efficacy of the prolongation of the progression-free survival and definitely the overall survival, that it is going to be a reality, but also we have to put in context the patient report outcomes and the quality of life reported by the patients.